at because there was a very interesting neoadjuvant abstract with TDM1 that I want to talk about. But before we do that, I want to know, what is TDM1? Is it a cytotoxic or is it an anti her agent? Carlos, what do you think? It's both. <laughs> Which is more? Or it's the same? I, I've always, I, I'm trying I, to figure that out. I just both. don't know the answer to that one. I think it's targeted chemotherapy, uh, uh, but I think it also retains the antibody properties, uh, albeit at a lower that's molarity. The lower, that's the point. A lower molarity, but it's, in the lab, it still can, you can show that it does a, this antibody dependence on mediated cytotoxicity. So it's targeted chemotherapy. It's probably working mainly by, uh, by, by the uh, cytotoxic effect of DM1. Uh, be interesting to see what happens when tumors bypass DM1, bypass TDM1. I mean, are they bypassing DM1 or are they passing T? Right. And uh, we have some anecdotal observations in our practice that some patients, upon progression on TDM1, at re upon rebiopsy, they have they don't have any any HER2 gene amplification detectable anymore. Uh, in talking to colleagues, it's something that others have seen, but we may need, need more information. Right, and we'll touch on that in a few minutes when we talk about HER2 mutations in a few minutes. But I think before we get there, let's talk a little bit just briefly about the, the Christine trial. Mm -hmm. um, does someone want to take that on? Yeah, so Christine was uh, is presented by Sarah Hurwitz, uh, an important study because it's taking a look at this concept of can we go sort of chemo-free. So they looked at TDM1 pertuzumab versus um, BCRG006 TCHP regimen. And what it showed was that the PCR rates were uh, roughly about the same, a little bit higher in the TCHP. It was around 55% versus around 50% 44, or so. 44, yeah. 44%. 44. Um, so the TCHP um, sort of wins out. More women were able to get breast conserving surgery. But coming back to that, you know, if you take a look at equivalent, yes. But who are those patients who with TDM1 pertuzumab, 44% patients, had a complete PCR? This is very in line with what the German group, the ADAPT uh, trial showed, a PCR rate with TDM1 alone of 40%. So who are those women and men who can, who have HER2 positive disease, in some cases locally advanced breast cancer, where you can give and in German, uh, it was four shots of TDM1. Here, it was six shots of TDM1 plus pertuzumab. And about 40% of these patients will get complete pathological response. And if you could figure that out, if you get a biomarker, and if we can then follow these patients, they may not be any of these patients who need chemotherapy. Um, so I think that, to me, is going to be the most important cushion that we need to now take in the adjuvant setting. It's not who we can add on more treatments to, who we can get pertuzumab and the next generation of anterior two therapies, but how do we de-escalate our treatments to a point where we can actually give an ADC alone to certain women and get a complete pathological response and maybe forego chemotherapy? Now, these are women. I think you're talking about the <coughs> ER positive subgroup, I believe, yeah. right? So those were ER positive, but in Christine, they're all comers, right? Mm -hmm. Correct, but yeah. in the ER positive subgroup, that's a disease that we know biologically doesn't die quickly. Mm -hmm. So could it be that even if we prolong the neoadjuvant therapy, because it was well tolerated, we may even see a better pathological complete response rate, which is that surrogate you're seeking, right, to call the, the, the therapy effective. Right. And then, of course, you know, what's interesting about surrogacy there is that we have always established surrogacy in the context of chemotherapy and anti her therapy when we take a look Good at point. it. But can we establish the same surrogacy when we're just giving a biological targeted agent? And the surro is the meaning of surrogacy the same um, and, and the correlation the same? And we just don't know. Well, if you use the same length of therapy, it may not be yeah. Yeah. necessarily. Yeah, and I think the take-home message is, at least in ER negative patients, you still need some chemo with your TRAS. And we know carboplatin plays a large role in ER negative, HER2 driven breast cancer. So I think the take home message that I'll leave the meeting with is I'm still going to go back to my TCHP mm -hmm. regimen yeah. in the neoadjuvant mm -hmm. setting for those, for, the time uh, being. for those of us who don't think about biology on a day-to-day -day basis because mm -hmm. we're seeing so many patients. <laughs> um, <laughs> TCHP will still be my go-to. I think that's the take home message. And that's unfortunate because I still think there's so much excitement about using TDM1 in the early stage setting. Imagine the day when that's all you have to give your patient if we and can sort just that out. Yeah, and I totally agree in the ER negative in particular. There was a big differential between the TCHP and the uh, TDM1P, but in the ER positive, it wasn't that big of a differential. It was still in favor of TCHP, but not that much. So yeah. it's very intriguing that we could kind of sneak up on um, some patients with just the TDM1 
um, and perhaps do the stress test and see if they really get the PAF-CR. And I'm uh, excited about combining TDM1 with the immunotherapies. I actually think we'll see. Yeah, something you know, what, I was just thinking positive. about that, Kim. And so there's a metastatic uh, yeah. trial ongoing with a checkpoint and the bitter plus TDM1. Correct. And I think coming to the two. point that yeah. you're raising before is, you know, there is still potentiation of ADCC with TDM1. There is still that cell cytotoxic effect that's going to actually help Im uh, generate an immune response. And if it can potentiate that by adding an immune therapy, I think that's, uh, that's very exciting. Yeah. So. I, I was a bit surprised about the magnitude of the difference in Christine, yeah. in favor of TCHP. And unless there's the novel resistance to DM1, right. which is a possibility, right. uh, I think this speaks to, the, to something that we may have an underappreciated heterogeneity I was just, of breast yeah. cancer to begin with. I right. think there mm -hmm. is the heterogeneity that you mm -hmm. get overlap and coverage through other chemotherapy Correct. that you don't get with a direct kill. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, and right. it might just be as simple as just her two expressions.